the equation x squared plus 2, the closed interval 0 to 3, and we're going to make three rectangles, three subintervals to approximate the area under this curve. Now, if it's a left side Riemann sum, that means we're going to form rectangles based upon the left side from 0 to 3. And we're going to make three rectangles. So for the first rectangle, we focus on the left side. That would be 0. And we form a rectangle. There's our first rectangle. And then we form our next rectangle based on the left side. So this dot right here. There's our next rectangle. And then we form our third subinterval. There's our third rectangle. We have three rectangles. The area of these three rectangles would be a rather not very close, but an approximation of the area under the curve. Now, will this area we get here be bigger or smaller than the area under the curve? It'll be smaller. As you can tell, there's a lot of gaps that we missed. So what's the area of the first box? Well, can you tell that's a width of 1, a height of 2? So that is 2. What's the area of the next box? 3. And the area of the third box is 6. Now, if the heights weren't 1, do you understand? It'd be, this, if, this, if these widths were 2, it'd be 2 times 2. But the widths are 1 on all these. It's not always a width of 1. Got it? For now, it's a width of 1. So each rectangle is simply width of 1, what's the height? So the area would simply be 2 plus 3 plus 6, which is simply 11 square units. That's my area. Now, here's how you technically would do this. Here's the mathematical way of saying it. This is a left side Riemann sum. Actually, let me do the right side, and then we'll talk about the technical. Right side Riemann sum, basically, instead of focusing on the left side to make it, you focus on the right dot. So you focus on this dot, and you make your rectangle. You focus on this dot, and you make your rectangle. You focus on this one and you make a rectangle. Do you see how you focus on the right side of the interval? There's a subinterval. Here's a rectangle. You focus on the right side to make your box. Here you focus on the left side to make your box. With the words left and right side. Now, is this area going to be larger or smaller than the actual area under the curve? Isn't this larger? Because you can see the areas are above. Anyways, the area of this one is 3, correct? The area of this one is 6, and the area of this one is 11. So our area is 3 plus 6 plus 11, which is 20 square units. Now, 20 square units. Would you agree the area underneath this curve is somewhere between 11 and 20? This one's above, this one's below. So can we possibly average those and get a somewhat reasonable area under the curve? Okay. So it's probably going to be the average of those would be the somewhat accurate. Would you also agree the more rectangles you make, the more accurate it gets? Got it? Now, here's how you would do it, though, mathematically, is what's the width of all of these? Okay. So the width. Now, I'm going to put the width outside, because isn't it the width the same for all of them when I distribute it in? What was the height of the first one? Wasn't it f of 0? See the equation? Wasn't the height f of 0? Then wasn't it f of 1? Then wasn't it f of 2? What's the height of this rectangle? Well, isn't that... Plug in 1 to this function. Don't you get 3? Without drawing the graph, do you see how? If I distribute the w, do you understand that would be width times f of 0, width times f of 1, width times f of 2? Would that give me this answer? 
That's how you would do it here. Now this one would be width times what? Which one did you start with? Did you start with f of 1? Plus f of 2 plus f of 3. Now are you always going to be 0, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3? No, it depends on the interval. Depends on how wide the interval is. But do you see how if you didn't want to make the graph, here's how you would do it mathematically. If you just had an equation, you could plug in the values, find the heights, multiply it by the one set width, and we're done. Meaning, if we did this one in particular, isn't this a one width? And what was f of 0? Well, if you plug in 0, what do you get? Well, 0 squared plus 2. And here you do 1 squared plus 2. And then plus, you'd have 2 squared plus 2. Wouldn't that be 1 times 2 plus 3 plus 6? Is that the same as this? Same answer? Yeah. For this one, wouldn't the width be 1? I'm not going to do all the calculations, but what's f of 1? f of 1, well, the output is 3. f of 2, well, the output here is 6. f of 3, the output is 11. You get the same answer. This is a mathematical way of seeing it. This is a graphical way of seeing it. You have to be able to kind of do both. Lastly, this word, lower sum, or the word inscribed, which of these two is a lower sum? Isn't that the lower sum? Aren't these rectangles inscribed under the graph? Wouldn't you call these upper sum or circumscribed? Why am I saying these words? Because the AP test could use these words, could use left or right, could use different kind of wording. So basically, let me show you a different graph here, though. What if your graph looked like this? If your graph looked like that, you understand a lower sum Do you understand those are lower sums? The rectangles are underneath the graph. Are we okay with that? Upper sums look like this. This is a bad one. I chose a really bad graph. Upper sums deal with the outer part because you really can't do it with this one. redo this um, uh, okay there's the peak let's go down it's because the peak was over do you understand upper sums deal with like this are you okay with that as an upper sum upper sums or circumscribed have areas that are over the picture we're here do you see how they're all inside So lower are inscribed or inside. Can't spell. And these are outside. Inside and outside the graph. 